welcome to Investment Trends. Um, today we are focusing our energies on multi-facility economic zones. Now, um, the multi-facility economic zone is a government initiative introduced to Zambia in 2005 to stimulate industrial and economic activities in the manufacturing sector through value addition for local and export markets. It aims to create a platform for Zambia to achieve economic development by attracting significant domestic and foreign direct investment, FDI, through a strengthened policy and legislative environment. My guest in studio today is Mr. Robert Banda, who is the Manager Infrastructure Development at the Zambia Development Agency, ZDA. You're welcome to the program, Mr. Banda. Good to have you. How are you? Thank you, and how are you? I'm good, thank you. Very good. Uh, very interesting topic we have today, uh, multi-facility economic zones. And I think I would speak for many when I say that the first time I heard of this, I, I didn't really have a proper understanding of what it was, what it was about, what it was meant to do. So just quickly get us into the know-how of what this is. What is an M phase? An M phase, or sometimes we even call it an industrial park, mm -hmm. is just essentially simply uh, an investment platform and this is an investment platform which is declared as a Memphis so there's going to be a declaration because it's just like a, a house that you're renting out those tenants who come into that house will be the landlord I mean they'll be, they'll be the landlords mm -hmm. the landlord is the Memphis developer mm -hmm. so that's simply it's not anything complicated complicated it's just a simple investment platform. All right. This concept <coughs> was introduced to Zambia in 2005. How do you think it has fared in terms of promoting industrialization in this country and also just making sure that um, manufacturing is pushed forward? In fact, when you talk about the concept having been sort of uh, introduced in 2005, what comes to mind is that people want to see quick results in terms of what is happening in the M phase. That's right. But I mean, what I'll tell you is that the first M phase was declared in 2008, which is a Chambeshi M phase. Mm -hmm. And from the declaration itself, there is what we call infrastructure development. Infrastructure development is an expensive undertaking. And this is where you see we are still grappling with infrastructure before we see that investors are coming into the M phase. So we are basically at the point where we're developing, although I must say Chambeshi has moved quite some lips, uh, as well as uh, Lusaka South. Mm -hmm. But <coughs> we still have to see a number of investors going into the emphasis. Okay. It's the infrastructure that we're talking about. And because of its expensive nature, there is, appears to be a perception that it is a slow process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That it, it sort of somehow takes longer than it should. Infrastructure it development takes quickly. long. I mean, because you have to put in electricity. Yes. You'll have to put in roads. You have to put in water, sewer systems. Mm -hmm. All this take a while and it's a lot of money we're talking about here. All right. So mm -hmm. I was going to ask what kind of investments can go into um, a multi-facility economic zone, an MFES. Um, can I, with my small um, sweet potato canteen, come into the MFES? MFES is basically it's a deliberate policy for us to sort of encourage industrialization. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about industrialization, we're really looking at manufacturing activities because you want value addition. And at the end of the day, you want employment creation. So the kind of investments we target, we target are those that are undertaking manufacturing activities. Of course, in that M phase, we do not restrict the kind of uh, investment that should go in there. Okay. There are other investments such as the bank, uh, fuel station, for instance, housing itself, general housing. There is also uh, things like universities, schools. They can go in an M phase. But when we say targeted, we really want economic activity coming from the industrialization, that is manufacturing activities, who we talk about when we talk about incentives. Mm -hmm. And those are the people that we incentivize so that they go in there and we then give them those incentives. So yes or no, can an SME go into an MFES? Can they yes. set up there? Yes, an, M an SME can go in an MFES. Mm -hmm. But depending on where the SME is, will he be somebody who will be providing a specific service? Mm -hmm. So those are, again, details that we can go into if we have to discuss the participation of SMEs. All right. So we have uh, 
six um, multi-facility economic zones currently operating um, in our country. Just let us take stock of the um, operations that are currently taking place um, in these uh, economic zones. Okay. The six we're talking about, Chambeshi was the first one. Right. Then we had the Lusaka South. Mm -hmm. We have the Lusaka East near the airport. We also have uh, two industrial parks, one in uh, Lusaka and one in, uh, <coughs> in Ndola, Sub-Sahara, Gemstone Exchange. These M phases, like I said, are at the moment undertaking this uh, m infrastructure development. Right. But uh, when we sort of say, let's take stock, I would generally spe be saying the backbone infrastructure generally is now fully in place. Chambeshi, for instance, has already recorded over 44 enterprises in there. Okay, with the uh, Chambeshi copper smelter being one of the largest. Whereas the Lusaka South, I mean, last week we were sort of commissioning the malting plant for the Zambia breweries. We also have a pharmaceutical company there. The Zambia fertilizer we already have set up. But even as they have set up, like in the Lusaka South, there's still a question of the electricity supply. And we're just working on the substation at the moment. All right. So in it, it looks like a lot of activities are happening, a lot of, of huge investments have gone into. Let's talk about the employment aspect. How many mm. jobs have been created in the um, M-Phase, in the, in the, um, mm -hmm. you know, um, the establishment of the M-Phases in this country? Okay. From the, from the current M-Phases that are operating, I would estimate that there's about 10,000 jobs that have been created, with Chambeshi contributing something in the region of 8,600. The Lusaka South has just sort of started sort of uh, getting into the cracks, but with the construction activities that were there, we think we had something well over 1,000 employees working in that M phase. The Lusaka East, maybe 200 thereabout. Uh, the Ndola and uh, the other one that I didn't mention was the Lumwana, mm -hmm. all sort of contributing maybe slightly less, but all in all, somewhere in the region of 10,000, 11,000. And obviously looking to go higher. Of course. I mean, yes. that's the whole idea because mm -hmm. once they start operating, these will sort of employ people and, you know, we will see a lot of employment, direct employment as well as indirect employment. All right. So, so what, what, what is the criteria of um, declaring an area, an M phase, a place where people can, you know, um, get together, create um, partnerships, manufacture, mm. produce uh, services? Um, I remember when, uh, you know, also we started hearing of the M phase. There was talk of, no, we're going to make all the gentlemen on, for example, Alec and Kataron who make doors, who make gates, who do fabrication and welding, put them in one area and see them work together. They can make cooperatives and whatnot like that. Mm. So wh what is the criteria in selecting an area and declaring it an M phase? Okay. The first criteria is that we need to see it's a potential of an economic activity because in all of these things we're talking about economic activity. So if an area has a potential to create uh, economic activity, to generate economic activity, we will consider that as a candidate for MFES creation. An MFES can be declared by, uh, rather can be developed by a government, okay. but can also be declared by private sector. Mm -hmm. The most important uh, input in there is the land. You have to have land where this will sort of be developed. So once you have that land, you then come to the ZDA. The ZDA will sort of assess and request that you put up a master plan. The master plan details the potential investments that you will sort of have in that emphasis. So mm -hmm. the master plan is a key. Land itself is, without question, we need it's paramount. Mm -hmm. So the master plan tells us that indeed there is a potential for economic activity here and the declaration will sort of be undertaken. All right. Do mm -hmm. we have, uh, you know, uh, any other plans in terms of opening up other MFIS uh, zones in other parts of the country? Because we have some vast land across yes, this country yes, yes. that is not being uh, yes. U utilized. Yes, in fact, that is our role as a Zambia Development Agency is to sort of look at the potential areas that we would sort of uh, pinpoint that we will put up an MFIS in there. It's all the, about the potential to generate economic activity. Mm -hmm. We have certain uh, areas like in the Chembe, for instance, we are trying to put up an emphasis there across the, the Levi Manawasa Bridge. We are also looking at uh, Kabwe to put up another emphasis. Mm -hmm. We are also we're trying to sort of look at a broad-based idea where we may approach that every province may have an emphasis. 
it's not that the, the government will develop this emphasis. We will invite private sector as well to right. sort of participate in the development because they'll have to see potential to make their own money as well. Okay. But these are important investment platforms which will sort of then lead the industrialization strategy that we're sort of undertaking now. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, this is Investment Trends, and uh, if you're just joining us, hello and welcome to the program. Today we're talking about multi-facility economic zones, and in the studio I have with me Mr. Robert Banda. He is the manager infrastructure development at the ZDA. Now, we spoke to one MFES to hear how they appreciate the concept of the multi-facility economic zones, and these were some of their sentiments. Listen to this. We're operating a pharmaceutical manufacturing plant. So it's a newly built uh, pharmaceutical manufacturing plant that is purpose built. So it's designed for its purpose. So this plant was, uh, uh, as, uh, we started to work on this plant. The groundbreaking ceremony was in 2013, but the actual construction work started in 2014 and uh, we had to get our licenses by 2016. So we started uh, manufacturing. Uh, we have different units, uh, penicillin block and non-penicillin block. So we started with a non-penicillin block that is manufacturing non-penicillin medicines. So uh, we've been running the plant and uh, we're hoping to go further by uh, uh, achieving much more because the pharmaceutical sector is a highly regulated industry and we need to make sure that we get all our standards right and that everything that we do is done in line with that. Well, the impact and the benefits are many from different aspects that you look at them from. So when you have an industry like this, this is the manufacturing sector, then you, pr you create employment. And I think that's one of the major things to look at. And also uh, Zambia is a landlocked country, but despite that, it's surrounded by eight neighbors. So you've got ready markets apart from just Zambia, you can export to the eight neighboring, uh, neighboring countries. And uh, well, Basically, what we, we expect to see is a reduction probably in the cost of medicines. And uh, like I said, linking it to the fact that we're landlocked, most of the medicines that come to Zambia are, are imported. So it will cut on the lead time that it takes instead of people waiting for medicines to, to be purchased outside and take probably like four to six months to arrive. You have medicines that can be manufactured here and now, depending on the urgency that we have. So this is a very positive thing. And also we're working towards the sustainable development goals. I think we're looking at goals number three and eight that we're addressing that are health related and are promoting this kind of sector. The beauty about medicine manufacturing is you have to meet the requirements as stipulated by the World Health Organization and these are the requirements for medicines for human use. So regardless of where you make the medicines, the standard is the same. So when you come to Zambia, we have uh, a regulatory uh, agency, Zambia Medicines Regulatory Authority, that will also ensure that indeed we are complying with the guidelines. So we're subjected to stringent inspections. I think probably when you compare like worldwide next to aviation, you have pharmaceutical because of the, the nature of the of the product that we manufactured. We're dealing with human life. So I can rest assure you that human life here is as, as important as it were in another country. And even more, it, we can guarantee, I can imagine the medicines that we make will go to the neighbors, will go to people that we know. So definitely knowing very well that this is how we've done it, we can actually guarantee that the medicines will be of good quality. Very interesting. This is Investment Trends, and I'm still here chatting to Mr. Robert Banda. Now, the Lusaka South uh, Multi-Facility Economic Zone is owned by the government, and the rest are privately owned. Is there any difference in the services offered? Is there, can you tell that though this is government, and these investments are government-oriented, and these are private, and these are private people? Can you tell the difference? There's no difference. I mean, the MFES essentially is supposed to be an investment platform. Government may, and in fact, government has done so in the Lusaka South, because they basically wanted to sort of assess and 
sort of set up as an example how investors should sort of go into these kind of activities and these kind of investments. Before you embark on them, you then maybe take a leaf by looking at the Lusaka South and say, yes, that's the way an MFA is supposed to be developed. Mm -hmm. But of course, by and large, we do have uh, certain uh, challenges in the government sort of led MFAs because of the restrictions in the, uh, <coughs> the limitations in the finances. Okay. Finances, if, as long as they're unlimited, we would have seen a lot of activity. When you look at the, um, the types of uh, the overwhelming uh, interest that has been created in the Lusaka South, you'll be amazed. I think we've got over 300 pending applications for people to go in there. Wow. But because of the restriction that there is no electricity at the moment, mm -hmm. we find ourselves a little sort of holding back. But as soon as we have all the infrastructure in place, you'll see that it's going to be spiraling up and people will go into the MFAs. There right. is a very big desire that people should go in there. Okay. Mm. Are there any incentives for investors to get into the MFAs and operate from there? What yes. incentives are you as ZDA offering to these investors? Okay. First and foremost, to go in the MFAs, the biggest in the incentive is that this is an area where you will go into to undertake your activities, an area that is already been serviced. Serviced in the sense that there are already roads, mm -hmm. there's already electricity, there's already water, so you don't have to hustle for all these things before you sort of start operating. That's one of the biggest incentives. Now, we've wanted to encourage as many people to go into the MFES, and this is why we've next said created uh, the incentive scheme. The incentive scheme meaning people that are undertaking manufacturing activities and are operating in an MFES will be entitled to certain benefits. And these benefits are legislated. There is some benefits in the Income Tax Act, mm -hmm. as well as some benefits in the Customs Duty Act. So you will find that if you do operate in an MFES, the first five years of your operations will exempt you from paying any income tax. You won't pay any corporate tax, zero. All the machinery that you'd want for your investment, all the equipment, all specialized motor vehicles, they will have to be imported duty free. And uh, everybody in the Ministry of Finance, Azami Revenue, they know that as long as this is an uh, MFES permit, an MFES licensed, he's entitled to such incentives. Mm -hmm. Over and above that, there are those uh, people that put in money, the shareholders. Right. You do declare dividends to shareholders, and those di dividends will attract what is called withholding tax. Mm -hmm. But because you're in an MFES, those uh, shareholders will get their dividends without the deduction of withholding tax. Those incentives are legislated. Okay. Then ZDA will continue facilitating to ensure that whatever you need, if you're getting challenges in, you know, we do have government is perceived to be a very slow operating uh, machinery, but facilitation is sort of guaranteed to you as long as you're in the MFS. All right. So mm. then somebody would be thinking, hmm, that place seems like a right place I can go to. But mm -hmm. do I qualify to get some of these incentives? Um, mm -hmm. Are there requirements? What criteria do you, um, you know, sort of take to pick who, mm -hmm. take, who gets an incentive? Because yes, somebody could be uh, manufacturing something, mm -hmm. but do they qualify? The qualification is uh, the threshold, the investment threshold. Okay. We're saying in the M phase, you have to be doing manufacturing activities. Mm -hmm. And the threshold we've sort of come up at the moment currently is uh, United States dollars, 500,000. You may, you may say 500,000 is too much, but you see, we're talking about investments here and we're talking about giving incentives. So there is something like a quid pro quo when we say, look, as long as you're meeting this criteria, you will be entitled. Obviously, other businesses will not be entitled to incentives, but they are free to come into the MFS. Mm -hmm. I did indicate that the MFS is like a, a landlord. The developer is like a landlord. So he will accept you or he will not accept you depending on whether you can meet the fees or the rates that's sort of charged on that investment. All right, wonderful. Um, so we, we do know that uh, Zambian breweries recently, you know, launched or opened its uh, malting plant. And I know that this is a very big investment mm -hmm. um, for Zambian breweries. But also it's a good thing for this country. Sure. Um, how involved were you as the Zambia Development Agency in this whole process? Zambia Development Agency is, is essentially an investment promotion agency. When Zambia breweries approached, uh, they were essentially looking for land to sort of uh, make the expansion. And uh, when we sort of uh, assessed their, 
business uh, uh, brief, we understood that they were going to be doing agro-processing, mm -hmm. which to us qualifies as an investment in an MFES. And we sort of say, look, why don't you go and discuss okay. your requirements with the MFES management and uh, Eureka. We had an investment going into that part of the MFES. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And uh, it was commissioned last week. And we do hope it will generate because, you see, Zambia breweries uh, had been importing malt from Zimbabwe. And uh, obviously with the Zimbabwean economy in the way it is, it is just more advantageous to Zambia now that malt will be produced here and it will sort of be supplied in the region. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the um, investment promotion and protection agreement. How does this work? Okay, that's unrelated, but mm -hmm. obviously related to investment because yeah. an investment promotion and protection agreement, it just essentially is a memorandum where an investor sort of comes and seeks the uh, intervention of ZDA to sort of look, these are my intentions, I want to sort of go, but I'm bringing so much money. But what assurance do I have that this money is going to be safe in Zambia? Right. So we encourage them to sort of enter into an uh, IPPA, which is an investment promotion and protection agreement, essentially to just assure them that the investment is protected as well as to ensure that we will facilitate whatever you need in terms of trying to promote and implement the project. Right. So mm -hmm. is the um, M phase accommodating um, local, um, I would want to call them domestic um, investors as well as international um, investors as well? Is there, you know, a synergy going on? Everybody's comfortable, everybody's free. Of course, everybody's free, but you see, from our locals, the locals, they will always say, look, the threshold for which to earn uh, the incentives is too high. That yes. has always been the cry. And we've always been discussing ways in which we could sort of maybe bring this down. But at the end of the day, what we're saying that the MFES is an investment platform which is open to both local and foreign investors. So there is no we do not sort of have a bias to sort of say these will just be the people that we want. It's all, everybody's in, invited to be in the MFS. Right. But you need to meet certain criteria and the criteria is non-discriminatory. All right. Your last words, Mr. Banda, in, in just informing those investors who are watching us and um, who are thinking, well, mm, I'm not too sure. Should I? Should I not? Mm. The amount is just too high. Can I manage? Can I not? What is your word of encouragement to them? I mean, the weather, is it high or what? <laughs> My word of encouragement is that this is an investment platform which has been sort of created essentially with the investor in mind. An investor does not have to come and hustle Lusaka Water and Sewerage, get Zesco to have the connectivity. These things will be there in the MFES and your job as an investor and we want to see the production. So don't doubt. We give long-term leases in the MFES. The houses that you live in, everybody has a 99-year lease. The MFES we're sort of talking about up to 40 years lease. A 40-year lease, you still, because I know there are some investors who sort of say, but it won't be my land at the yeah. end of the day. So what, 99 years, 40 years? The idea is to look at economic activity. All right. So I encourage them to sort of still come and look at the MFES. It is a very good, viable option. All right. Well, Mr. Banda, thank you thank so much. Thank you very much for no coming problem. to our program Thanks so today. Much. Thanks so much. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, this is where we wrap up. I was talking to Mr. Robert Banda, who is the Manager Infrastructure Development at the ZDA, just giving us an insight into understanding better um, on what the multi-facility economic zones in this country are all about how you can get um, yourself there and just understand that it is a bigger part of going the industrialization way and you will be doing your part to contribute to that very, very important journey. I have been your host. My name is Chilufi Amuela. We'll see you next time with another interesting topic. Bye-bye.